What's going on friends? If you own a Harley powered by a big twin Evo, you've got one of the best sounding and most reliable Harleys that was ever produced. But as with any big twin Evo, these engines did lack a little power, and by now your Evo engines probably got a lot of miles on it. Sure you could just rebuild your existing engine, but you could also put a brand new fresh Evo engine in it instead. If your Evo is down on power, the thing's burning oil, it's got low compression, the thing is really hard to start, you're probably pretty well aware that it's about time to get that engine rebuilt. You've already got a bike you love with the engine you love, you're not really a fan of the twin cam or the Milwaukee 8, and especially, definitely not a fan of the price of these new Milwaukee 8 bikes that they're trying to push on us today. Sure, you could pull that old tired motor out, break that thing down, and completely rebuild it from the crank up. But that takes time, and if you're not doing it yourself, labor costs add up in a hurry. So instead of pulling your old engine out to get it rebuilt, why not just replace it with a brand new crate engine? A brand new crate engine is going to have the cases and all the goodies in there that are meant to handle some high horsepower from an Evo engine. Because with the stock cases, there were a few little issues there when you really started trying to put some power into an Evo motor. But before we take a look at the engines today, please don't forget to hit the like button if you enjoy the video, and please consider subscribing to the channel. Getting a replacement Evo engine in the crate engine variety is pretty easy, considering that Harley-Davidson really didn't have the strongest patents on the Evo engine to begin with, which this allowed the aftermarket to build aftermarket basically clones of the Evo which had the factory defects engineered out so you can get an extremely powerful Evo engine that's not going to crack the cases or pull the studs right out of the cases. So some of the common problems that we have with Evo engines when you're really trying to put some power into them was number one, the cylinder stud spacing. They were really close together. And what happens is when you start trying to put some high compression into them, sometimes those cylinder studs, they start to try to pull out of the cases. And then also with the more power you put in them, the Evo would sometimes tend to overheat because of the lack of fins on the cylinder. And in some model years, they actually had issues with the cases themselves due to the castings. They would actually crack when you really started to try to put high horsepower into these motors. The fact is, is simply that the motors out of the factory weren't really designed for big horsepower. These engines were designed for reliability, longevity, while producing a fair amount of horsepower and a pretty decent amount of torque. Now, with going with an aftermarket Evo crate engine, you get that longevity, but you also get a butt ton of horsepower and a really good amount of torque, way more than you could ever get with the factory engine. Now, we all know about the S&S &S Evo engines, which we're going to take a look at those a little later on in the video, but first, let's look at the little bit more budget-friendly engines from RevTech. Now, RevTech manufactures Evo replacement engines in several different displacements. They have an 88, a 100 inch, a 110 inch, a 115 inch, and they go all the way up to a monster 125 inch displacement Evo engine. Now the 88 inch RevTech engine, you can get into this for about $39.99, and this is just in the basic natural finish. Now the prices are going to vary depending on which displacement you're looking at in the finish, but you're going to be between $39.99 for the natural finish 88, all the way up to $5,700 for the polish finish on that big 125 incher. Now, all RevTech engines are assembled in the USA, and they also come with a two-year, 20,000-mile warranty. Now, this is really hard to beat, and I don't really think you're going to be able to get a warranty like that on an engine you built yourself, trying to trace it down to the exact same part that failed, and then ruling out that maybe you might have messed up somewhere, but I know I've been there, done that. Now the RevTech engine cases, these are cast from the start to handle the power. These engines are cast from 356 T6 aluminum with 4140 steel forged flywheels using 4340 chrome ollie connecting rods. They even went as far as to add piston oil jet coolers and a 9 tooth oil pump to really help keep the temperatures down. Keith Black pistons, Andrews cams, and roller rocker arms. Cylinders have increased fin area. Compression releases are standard, and every engine comes with a Makuni H5R carb. 
Now the size of the carburetor is definitely going to depend on which displacement of engine you get. These engines are basically ready to bolt in and run right out of the box, which saves you time, money, labor, and also that annoyance of having to chase parts down everywhere or wait for your parts to come in. Power on these engines, starting just with the 88 alone, is about double what the original Evo was putting out. So on the 88, we're looking at roughly 85, 90 horsepower and about 100 foot-pounds of torque, all the way up to 120 horsepower and 135 foot-pounds of torque on the 125-inch motor. So guys, RevTech was a very popular engine back in the day during the chopper craze. So these motors are out there everywhere used. So you might even be able to find somebody's old chopper project or one of them old $100,000 choppers that's getting sold for about four grand, and you can get that big engine, pull it out of that, and sell the chassis of what's left of the bike you took it out of. Now one of the other budget-friendly options on my list today, these are the Ultima engines. These engines don't exactly have as good of a warranty, not nearly as good as what RevTech was offering. They're very budget-friendly, and Kind of, I don't really know too much about the quality on Ultima these days. I know back in the day there were some issues, but it seems like today I haven't really heard as many bad things about Ultima as I used to. I'm really trying to be nice, but I'm also trying to be honest. Now, Ultima engines do produce some big power. Now, as you move up the food chain when it comes to displacement with Ultima engines and power output, the amount of warranty that they actually give you actually decreases with each level that you step up. And this is highly likely due to the power output because these engines do put out a pretty good amount of power. Ultima engines are available in 100 inch, 107 inch, 113, 120, and 127 inch configuration. Now Ultima is going to give you a 24 month warranty on their 100 inch motor, but it does drop to 12 months when it comes to the 107 and the 113. And when it comes to the 120 and the 127, they only give you six months from the date of purchase. Now, Ultima makes their cases out of C355 T6 aluminum using 4140 steel flywheels with 7.7 inch H-beam connecting rods and .927 diameter wrist pins, which will handle some serious power as well, just like the RevTech engine. For the cylinders, they went with more of a big fin design kind of more like the twin cam, which provides 30% more cooling area. So you not only got bigger fins, but you got more of them on this engine, but it's still the Evo design. But it also helps with cooling, which is extremely important when you have a high horsepower Evo. And also on these engines for easy starting, they come with compression releases that are automatic and they're also standard, so they're not gonna cost you any extra. Now the 100 inch Ultima is gonna start out at 41.99 and this engine's gonna net you 110 horsepower and 110 foot-pounds of torque, which that's not bad at all. Now from there, horsepower and torque climbs all the way up to about $5,800 for 140 horsepower and 140 foot-pounds of torque on that 127 engine. That might be why they only give you six months from date of purchase on it. That is a lot of power in an engine designed around the Evo. Now with Ultima and RevTech, these are sold only through authorized dealers. I mean, you can find them on eBay and some other shops out on the internet and a lot of your local independent shops will be able to order these for you. So just make sure you're careful before you buy one and you shop around and you don't pay too much for these engines because the prices vary dramatically between all the different dealers out in the network. But when it comes to replacement engines, SNS is probably gonna be your best bet and in my opinion, probably your most reliable. And the most reliable SNS engine that they offer is the SNS V80 variety. This is an excellent choice for a mild, basically stock replacement, but you're going to get a pretty good bump on that V80 engine from SNS due to the Super E carb, SNS 508 cam, and the SNS high flow cylinder heads. It comes with a two year warranty and it'll run you about 5,600 bucks at retail, but you could probably get that a little cheaper depending on where you buy it. With a good exhaust system, this brand new engine will really wake your bike up and this should put you somewhere about in the roundabouts in the 80 horsepower area, which is a big, big gain over a stock Evo or even one that's cammed out a little bit. And with the good tuning, you might even get a little bit more than that out of this motor. But the best part is with that extra added horsepower and that little bump in performance, you're still gonna maintain that longevity and reliability that the Evo's been known for. 
Now, if you got a little bit more cash in your budget and you're feeling froggy and you want a little bit more than just a bump in performance over the stock replacement, then you need to be looking at the SNS V111. This is a nice motor and it still retains that longevity and reliability. The V111 is basically a short stroke version of the V124, which we're going to take a look at here in just a minute. The V111 uses SNS's 585 cam and it also has lower compression, so you're not going to have the fueling concerns that you might have with a higher compression motor that we're fixing to look at. The V111 also comes with automatic compression releases and a two year warranty. SNS even made this engine just a little bit shorter than the stock engine's height. So getting this engine swapped out and put into your frame is going to be a breeze. Well, I say a breeze, but there's always hang-ups, even though the engine's shorter. Now, retail, this engine's going to run roughly about $6,200, but it's going to net you 115 horsepower and 122 foot-pounds of torque. And not only that, you're going to have that two-year SNS warranty. So basically, if you have an issue with anything on that motor, SNS dealers and supporters are everywhere. So you'll be able to take that motor in. Now, if there's a major problem with it, SNS will just replace the damn thing for you. Now, if you want some major power for your Evo engine replacement, SNS has the V124. This is 128 horsepower and 130 foot pounds of torque. For $7,400, this is one insane upgrade for your bike. This motor has the SNS 640 cam, SNS three piece flywheel. Super G carb, high volume oil pump, and a super stock ignition. Oh, and yes, this engine's definitely going to require a high performance clutch, just in case you were wondering. So guys, what engine would you choose? Would you try a RevTech or an Ultima, or just go with the SNS? Crate engines are a bit more expensive, but that comes with the price of convenience, and to add to that, you're also literally getting a brand new engine. The SNS is going to be probably quite a bit more money than actually getting a full rebuild done, even maybe with labor costs figured in. The Ultima and the RevTech engines, these are gonna be more in line with basically competition for pulling your motor out and paying somebody to have it rebuilt. Now, of course, if you're buying all the parts and doing it yourself, you might still end up in that range of an Ultima or a RevTech engine. But one of the best parts about the crate engines is they've taken these motors and they've basically engineered out where the factory kind of let us down. So you're not gonna have those common issues that are known to happen to Evos when you really start putting some power into them. Now, just a few side notes on if you do decide to do a crate engine swap, document everything. Make sure you keep your receipts, make sure you keep all the documentation that shows this is the engine that I removed and this is the engine that I put in, and yes, it does belong with the bike. I have seen it, there, are, there have been times where you get pulled over and they always walk up and they wanna see that steering neck, check that VIN, and sometimes they'll even look down at the motor, see if everything matches, and if it don't, you could really have some problems. But at least if you have some documentation on you showing that yes, I did swap the engine out, sometimes they can get you going back down the road again and they're not trying to impound your bike thinking it's stolen or something. Hopefully you never do, but if you do end up having to sell your motorcycle and you're going to let that engine and your factory engine go with it, just make sure you have all the documentation for the new owner to pass that along to show that the engine was swapped and yes, that engine does belong in this bike. But anyhow guys, that is all I've got for you this week. Please don't forget to hit the like button if you enjoyed the video and let me know in the comments if you have had any experience with swapping out for a crate motor. But until next week guys, you guys stay safe on the streets. Dodge those cars, please ride smart, stay safe, and I'll catch you back here next week. Thanks for watching.